Okay, we're just uh, in our last phase right here today. And thank you for staying and appreciating everything. Uh, Keao Moku Kapu uh, was a staunch, is a staunch defender of Kuliana land, including his own passed down by the crown a member of the Naikani o Maui, and a promoter of cultural practices, including canoe building. Keo Moku Kapu, welcome him. E ahawa i moko o ke awe kahi akala e puka maila. Ai ala o Maui no hono o pi ilani nui a kama kaulana no e hale akala. Puka maila ke keke a kana aloa 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 kala i hano hano ke ala i tahidi. Hiki akola no ilana i kaulala au kua ela ke aloha o pu upehe. U ike kapo ma moloka i o moloka i la itapuleo o. E o o hau o ke o ne o kakui hewa kuhi kuhi vale o kahali kalani. Hali akana ni makawa i o mano kalani po mano mano ke o ni ao no hiri. Pili mai lao ni i hau ka aina ka hele la ni ta aina i ushi a ta pu pu e. Ah, makua lani ho naka mana o naka mole ole ole hua male hua kala e na po ana e. Aloha e, aloha e, aloha e, na o hana no tapai aina o Hawaii nei. Aloha mai kako. I give a long story for everybody, but I'll try to cut them down to about a few pages. Uh, my name is Kia Moko Kapu. I'm from Kaula, uh, from Lahaina, the Moko of Lahaina, Kaula Valley. And I'd like to mile all the coordinators for this event, Laku Okoa. Just wanted to give everybody the buzzword on Tuesday, the 28th, we're also doing another Laku Okoa in Lahaina. And we're going to kind of rough it up over there because I had a meeting with the police department and I thought I was going to have one meeting with one, but about four of them came. Because Lahaina is at actually the capital of tourism, but I think people start need to realize that Lahaina is still the kingdom of Hawaii. And that the things that we need to do over there is a reminiscent of the things that had occurred in the past, which gave us the identity that we carry today as Kanaka Maoli. Uh, my wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. What am I? So, again, mahalo no kakua for everybody who coordinated this event. And I know there's one in Big Island. Uh, statewide, I think it's really important that we start bringing these kinds of things from the billows and bring it up to create an awareness so everybody in this Kohawai Pa'ana that decides to live with us knows the true history of what we've been dealing with. So it's not uh, necessarily, or I, I should say, a, good, a bad thing. It's a good thing that everybody get educated, especially for this specific day. What I literally wanted to talk about was my, my journey going home. And my journey going home, well, I would say this for everybody else, isn't such an easy journey. And it all started off about 20 years ago that all of a sudden my father had this little dream that we had to go home, so we went home. Then from that time on, I've discovered all these different facets that all of a sudden, I just wanted to go home and be on my one on mahi ai and gukalo and live my life as a kanaka by putting in my feet, my feet into the low east of Kaula Valley. And I still do that today. So that part of my life is never going, going to be separate from me. But then at the same time, in order to do what I needed to do, I had to get politically inclined. Starting with uh, being appointed for the Cultural Resources Commission, being a chair of the Barrow Council for four years on an eight year term for the protection of our Ivi Kupuna. Also sat on as an advisory to the Board of Trustees on the Native Hawaiian Historic Preservation Council. I was the chair for that. I also sat on a federal advisory 
uh, known as Westpac, West Pacific Fisheries Management Council. And it was all because of the rights that was laid out within the law. Now the county, you have uh, compliances that deal with 343, anything that is traditionally, culturally mandated to protect, that's the county side. On the state side, on the protection of Ivi Kupuna, you have like laws that talk about Section 6E and Hawaii Administrative Rules 13300. You know, all these numbers that our tradition and our customs and religions are interwoven into this today's political rhetoric of politics. Then getting involved in the Native Hawaiian Historic Preservation Council and understanding Article 12, Section 7 of the Hawaii State Constitution, uh, Hawaii Revised Statute 7-1, 1-1. Then in a federal level, they have other laws that talk about the Magnuson Stevens Act on Native rights. So at the same time, trying to be on Taro Farmer, I'm a political wreck. All because we need to understand the laws that have been placed before us in order for us to understand where we fit in this political well, I like to call it a pathetic society that we live in because there's a greater person up there, there's a man behind the curtain that is the one that is moving all these mechanisms around and forcing us to do our due diligence by following the path that was created by foreigners. So that's the whole rhetoric or the basic topic of where I'm coming from when I talk about you got to understand these things in order to go forward on a county level. On a state level, you got to understand these things to make sure that certain things are mandated. So things like the removing of our sands, our resources, needs to stop. But then at the same time, you get the state and the colonies, they blaming each other like this. You know, that's the whole problem as to why we Kanaka not can go forward and not can be the key to protect the resources that they are mandated to do. But I never come over here to talk about those things. I came over here to talk about an identity crisis, and that includes everybody here, all of us. The opening bully I talked about, the reason why I did it is because this book that I hold is the Indices, which every name of your family descendant most definitely is in this book. So I brought them all here today in my opening career. For Moko Keawe, to Maui, to Kaolawe, to Lanai, Molokai, Oahu, and Kauai. In hopes that we can encourage all of ourselves that we gotta strengthen our identity as Kanaka in order for us to persevere. And when I talk about strengthening our, our identity, is now I'm gonna get into my court case. 17 years of litigation with a foreign company that purchased properties from a mill company that's been here since the 1800s, Pioneer Mill, with a warranty title deed. So when I got involved in filing to answer a complaint back in 1999-2000. That took me up another corridor by truly understanding what warranty title is, what quiet title is, what quit claims are. And all that is just a color of title. It's all bogus that. If you get on land commission or royal patent, that's the true title. So by going through all these years of litigations, I found the most ugliest attorney, actually two ugly attorneys, and I'm going to mention their name. One was Donald Skears, worked for Pioneer Mail back in the 60s. He's retired. I like to say that I was the one that made him retire. Then came the most ugliest attorney which has been combating in legislation against Kaniala Ng's Kuliana bill. His name is Michael Gibson. His job is to prove that you are 
ain't the person that you claim to be. That's his job. So anytime when somebody files a complaint to a quiet title action suit, and if the families don't show up, then they lose by default. But if the families do show up, like for myself, I was kind of dumbfounded in the beginning. Where I going to go? What I going to do? What kind of attorney I going to need? So I filed pro se. Then I went online and I started looking for, you know, the kind of like uh, uh, be your own attorney uh, kind of website, try to figure out how I can combat it myself to, to have standing so I can stay in court. All these years trying to figure out how does this regime or this law can even address lands that came from the Mahele, from the Indices. And the indices clearly says that the indices of awards made by the Board of Commissioners to quiet land titles in the Hawaiian Islands. So my whole beef at that time when I opened up this book, and it's a, it's a Bible for me, because it gives clear definition of what was created from the time of 1850 of the Privy Council when they started to compile this book, 1843 to 1848 was when families actually came in front of the crown and registered these properties. <laughs> so my whole question boiled down to who and wake them up and how did they wake them up? So back to my point, we all are facing an identity crisis. And if we cannot combat or learn the tools on how we're going to deal with these so-called frivolous claims on quiet title adverse possession claims. I think that's the biggest fear on how come we don't even go into that door to even test ourselves on whether or not we have standing. The bottom line, it's not about standing, it's about blood. If you know that Shikulia now, if you know that Shikupu now, and if you know that you have the DNA and the bloodline, then somebody should be answering to that complaint. So I put together one cheat sheet for everybody. And I think this is really important that everybody start putting together their affidavits with exhibits just so later on if all of a sudden your lands get attacked or you see your name in the newspaper, you're already set to go. And I, I bring these things, why? Because, you know, people say that I made a big difference by cracking this thing wide open. That the jury made a determination that Keomoko Kapu owns 100% of the land and Makila Land Company basically owns zero. But that's only one part. That's only one part of the ugly rhetoric because if it's not a determination from the judge to say, with prejudice, then they're going to attack me again and again and again. So when the jury trial made the determination, the, the land company said, wow, we feel like we've been wrongly denied a fair trial. So two weeks later, I had to go back in front of the judge again because they filed a motion yeah, for the judge to dismiss the, dismiss the ruling from the jury. And Makila Land Company was saying that, well, we feel that, you know, through the four, four days of the jury trial, we feel that the jury didn't ha have ample time to look at the palapala and address the palapala legally that the company felt that they were uh, treated unfairly. Interesting enough, the judge says, well, let's talk about 15 years of treating this family unfairly before we start talking about anything else. So I'm sitting there and I kind of went stand up and I like, oh, dang. This thing went hooli. This thing is at the point where it's going to hooli, where we get judges starting to understand and starting to know that their determination, because they need to be non-biased, yeah, are looking at this in a different window. And the good part about it is, I think now when families ask that we want a jury trial, because we don't trust the judge's determinations. It's getting to that point. But the work is horrendous. 
How are we going to get ourselves to that point to even have standings before they even hit the newspaper saying that we give on quite out an adverse position claimed by so and so? To the affidavit of truth. And it's really simple. And you can do this fundamentally. You're not doing this because it's an urgency to protect your interests. You're just doing this because you want to, because it proves your lineal descendancy line, true blood, from you, your mom and dad, your grandparents, your great grandparents, using all these legal documents, birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates, probates, native testimonies, census reports, the copy of the Kuwait petition. You get a copy of your coupon assigning that, slip that in as an affidavit or a, as an exhibit to your affidavit. Then the Palapala Silanui, Palapala Hooka, and the royal patent. Once you create the document, the simplest thing you do is you get it notarized, then you somebody. You like go any further, the document has already been prepared to go into the Bureau of Conveyance. But things have to be made sure that there's no mistakes in here, then you can file this in the Bureau of Conveyance. This could also be used for a determination of bloodline with Hawaiian homes 50% blood. Because you already put your affidavits together using all the certified documents from the health department, from the archives, from the Bureau of Conveyance, compiled into one document. You can also use this for your kids. If you like your kids go come in med schools, you create the document, you prepare the document, you just submit this to the staff and say, yeah, I have Hawaiian. It's that simple. It's a fundamental method. It has to be fundamental. But some will be one moi ah all of a sudden. This thing will wake up. Then when different animal gonna appear. That it's an urgency that you get this done. Why? Because it ties you to this book. And if it ties you to this book, then you have an undivided interest claim of the property was that was awarded to the kingdom. So for us in Lahaina, we've been working diligently to put our papers together. We have over a dozen families that meet on a Thursdays to start doing the real work. Once the papers get all finalized, we're going home. Simple as that. We're just going home. We cannot wait until those people out there that have an interest of money to come upon our place, our Vahipana, and start claiming all these titles through a warranty title deed. We need to be the one to step up in front to stake a claim on those lands before they do. And if we miss that opportunity, at least we get Pala Pala to fight the first round. Why I say this and why I know that this is possible, because it's the same thing I did for my case. But then at the same time, the reality is you fighting a conglomerate that has a lot of money. So they can throw money around. If that attorney don't work, they'll hire another attorney. They'll bog down this system to a point as to where you're going to start looking like me. I'm 38 years old and I get all white hair. Nah, just joking on that part. I'm a little bit older than that. Oh, okay. But it's all about when they attack you in the newspapers, it's about genocide. They're erasing your name. They're erasing your genealogical tie to even existing to be a part of this book. If you know, you yourselves know that your kupuna is in this book, and all of a sudden a summons appear, you gotta show up. If not, then the erasing of your genealogical tie, the genocide that is created to detach our Kanaka from the only resource that can tie them to the point of origin is, will be no longer at reach. Because if you lose one, they'll use that for everything else. Why I say that is because my case, I've been fighting probably about five quite titles all at once. Some of the cases that I entered, 
I know I had a unilateral tie, but I know I had families that had a direct tie to it, but they didn't show up. So I showed up. I answered to every complaint. Why? Because I knew something that uh, holy because of what the crown had put together. So what they did, some people said, ah, you know what, I think you would jam up. I don't think you would jam up. I think they gave us enough tools to say that we are the person that you're filing the complaint against. And if they did jam up, then why are they filing the complaint to quite tell adverse possession lands? Why are they calling the heirs to the forefront? Even in the real estate market, when you look at the real estate market, they do a lot of quick claim. They subdivide land. Say if you had lands, 15 acres, they subdivide them in about 15 parcels. All 15 of those parcels of the land commission award shall be quick claimed, put in the Bureau of Conveyance separately. And what guarantees them that? Title insurance. You pay $1,000 title insurance, and that becomes the color of title. And that's bogus. All that is bogus. Then if you look at the real estate sale, once they transfer the, the sale over with the title insurance, they give you the insurance, they give you the pala pala, in small writings on the bottom of the page, it's in Latin. You know what that means? Buyer beware. So they got to put those things inside just so they can say, oh, yeah, I did guarantee you $1,000, but you also were aware that the original families can actually come and actually challenge you on the property that you just bought. So my message here today to everybody is don't get confused. Stay the course. Find out because you're Kubuna. They're there and they're waiting. When I went on to Kaula, I never realized that all of a sudden every place my father said, okay, you can build a house here but not build a house here because Tutu so-and-so stay buried over there. Oh, you know, like go back over there because get more tutus buried over there. Then at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, am I in the right place? But it's good to know that you still have resources to tell you. The land going to tell you where you need to go. But the whole thing is, in order to gain substance as Kanaka today, we got to start getting to the forefront and start doing the fundamental work to show and prove who we are as Kanaka and how we tie to this Mahele and how we tie to all the native testimonies of them telling the stories of what they did in these areas. I'm infatuated with that kind of stuff. When all of a sudden I find out that, you know, even Mike Kupuna was a part of the revolt. All those kinds of things. Even talking, even uh, Mo'olelo stories that talk about, you know, my... Kupuna Sam Kapu was the clergy for Alexander Baldwin. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm infatuated with that because I know that there wasn't just, you know, how the so-called foreigners, when they came, lazy Hawaiians. Our family is the Zakamai. They're smart. Now, if you go over there and you look at the Kuwait petition, you don't see X's like how you see on the transfer of titles. Like all of a sudden, the attorney says, oh, but your kupuna went sign the property over. Oh, we're on X. Well, I can show you where his original signature is. It's in the Kuwait petition. So how come he never signed his name, but he went put on X over there? Because it wasn't him that went signed that pala pala. It was a fictitious person that went signed that pala pala. So that's why I come over here today is to bring you guys the message. Don't wait until it happens. Get ready and wait for it to happen. Put your papers together. It's simple. It's really easy. And if you guys uh, really want to get down to business, then we're in Lahaina, 562 Front Street at the old uh, Malu Ulu Olele Senior Center right next to the tennis court. Come inside. We got a lot of information. We have a lot of probates. We have a lot of maps. Oh, and the maps, too. I have over, I would say, maybe 400 original maps. But a lot of the maps that I have is only of the west side. And these are the original maps that was from Pioneer Mill.
all of a sudden, one person that used to work for Pioneer Mill just dropped all this load on me. So I guess, okay, I'm no longer a messenger, but I'm the deliverer at the same time. So my kuleana today is to infect everybody with this virus. That we are failing because of our identity crisis by people telling us that we are not who we are or who we, who we're not who we claim to be. We should be the ones telling them who we really are. And, you know, the last thing I can say is, you know, Liliu, she said under the rest, yeah, to yield her th authority until such time. To not fight these guys, yeah, to wait, to get our kamai, to learn their ways, and that's how we're going to fight them. My victory is my burden. But then at the same time, my victory is your victory. So, help pick up the pala pala. Help assert yourself. Bring grace and glory, glory to your name. Wake up that pohaku. Wake up that pai aina. Let them know that you're still here. Let them know that you're still here to defend everything that is that your kupuna left behind for you. Now is the time. Now is the time for Huli. It's really simple. If we can all get everybody filing the affidavits and we have enough to show that we can beat the system, I can see 500 filing this at the same time and going home together one time. With crippled the market, with crippled the conglomerates. If I was to say, okay, in Lahaina, 25 of us going home simultaneously one time and we're going to hit one land company, the first thing I can see is these conglomerates, these investors, they're going to say, I'm taking my money and I'm getting out of here. Let me know when everything is done. And this is the truth about the whole thing. We got to be the one in the front. Oh, January, uh, the tribunal, yeah? You talking about? The tribunal. Okay. Well, she wanted to uh, me to mention about the tribunal that's happening in Iolani Palace at the Kanaina building. I think things are getting kind of a little bit rough because other countries want to be involved, so there's not a definite on whether or not they may happen. That's, that's the last word I got through the grapevine. But if it does... I going, Kaleko, you going? We're all going, right? We're going. And uh, I think that would be the, the, the perfect time to raise the bar on all the crimes and all the issues that we face as Kanaka Maoli, would be that specific time to do it. Uh, my, my fears on what's happening today has a lot to do with um, how we're going to divide ourselves based on a liquid measurement. That's always been my problem, that the 49% fall under the, whole, the U.S. Constitution and the 50% protected under uh, Congressional Act, that they would be the only ones to oversee where our destiny is going next. You know, these kind of things that draw my attention. So if the 49% versus the 50% is the problem, this, you don't need blood quantum. You can be 1%. You can put your papers together and not a 1% kanaka. If you can tie yourself to this mahele, then you have standings. Then you have aina. Don't only wait for the possibility of you being allowed a property on Department of Hawaiian Homelands. There's other places you can go. Now, if you're going to wait for your number to come up, this one might disappear before then. So no wait for your number for come up for DHHL knowing you're only going to get one 99 year, year lease. Put your papers together, go home, and you have a lifetime lease. Oh, a lifetime interest on large properties that you probably never know that it is there. But if it is there, we get the pala pala, we get the maps, we get the books, we can help you find those properties. If it's undeveloped and you don't like the guy over there, serve him. Or if it's, uh, I take that back. If it's developed and you don't like the guy over there, then you serve him. 
If it's undeveloped, now is the time to make a claim on those properties. Because if you don't, it's going to disappear. One person going to come in and going to claim everything. So with this, I just leave you with the so-called uh, last phrase of Mo'olelo or Mana'o that I've always lived by. Yeah? That the chiefs are no longer here to govern. That the people shall rise like a great wave and cover the land. And I'm talking about the Makai Nana. When I was in the Kanaina, I had all of a sudden had a person came up to me. And they was actually from the Kanaina, Kilinahe, and the Luna Lilo line. And he was saying that the only way we're going to get these things back is we need to name a king. And I looked at him and said... You know, the kingdom, you guys get your own problems. You guys get your own issues. The Makai Nana was instilled. It's in this book. So that's why I say that the Makai Nana shall rise like a great wave and cover the land because the chiefs are no longer here to govern. Now the Makai Nana is the one going to set the stage. If they want to bring back the king, that's where it's going to come from, from the Makai Nana. It should come from the people and not from the old heirs. I believe that. I've been involved in a lot of the organizations out there. I know the route they're going. I had to follow my heart. I had to follow this path. And this is where it got me today. And I know there is succession in this. I can guarantee you. But I cannot be the one to do your work. You got to do your own work. But I can only show you how. Thoroughly show you how. I can hold your hands if you need to. If you got to go caught, I'll be there for you too. But we got to start setting the stage already. We got to be the one. And I love this stage. You guys can come line and set up for us on Tuesday. On Tuesday, what's going to happen is we're going to march from Mala at 4 o'clock to Kalua Ehu. And the reason why we're marching is because Ha'alilio, when he came home, he came home, but then they took him to Oahu. So in essence, for us, is, he never actually come home to Lahaina. So what we want to do is honor him, yeah, in a funeral procession. And we're going to be carrying, well, now the police officer said, what, a flag too long. We cannot close down two roads. And plus it's at 4 o'clock, the peak time of the day. Why you guys chose 4 o'clock? That's when everybody going home. That's when the kids pass school. I go, because 4 o'clock is the only time you can catch everybody's attention. Especially when on the side of the road and he goes, oh, these damn guys, these Hawaiians all talking about the guy in independence. I mean, if we got to show some negativeness inside there to wake people up, then hey, fine. But Lahaina is Lele. So we're going to walk from Mala and we're going to take the road, uh, Front Street, actually, we're rededicating Front Street to the original name, which was Alakamo'i. We're putting the name back. Then from there, we go to Kalua Ehu. At 5.05, they get this big giant flagpole, which is actually on Kalua Ehu. And we're going to raise the kahai. Paying honor to Ha'alilio. There were certain things that went happen. Marlon to see the over there because now I sleep like 4 o'clock in the morning reading all the information that she's sending me on email. But it's starting to wake me up that something went happen. Something bad went happen. We need to correct that. We need to correct the pili care that went happen. And it was between two individuals yeah, Kawike Uli and Ha'alilio that made this great for us. But there's some bad stories behind it too. I want closure with this. So it's a procession and we're asking everybody, if you guys going to come and participate, please wear black. It's going to be uh, maybe double file uh, the longest we can make it. And we're going to honor the return of Ha'alilio on the day, November 28th of 1843. And hopefully, people start getting interested to understand and to study up 
and all of the background and history behind this so-called patriot. Because he left a lot for us to really think about. At the same time, we're going to be carrying his coat of arms. And his coat of arms was with Britain, Great Britain, the U.S., France, and Belgium with the Hawaii flag raised above the coat of arms. This is important because people got to know the truth. And what a perfect place to do it in Lahaina. Where Ha'aliyo left, where the, his va'a was waiting for him to take him across the ocean, and he never came home from that day. But Tuesday shall be the day in a great uh, praise of glory. We're going to bring him home. And we're going to brandish his colors, and we're going to brandish the coat of arms that he brought home for all of us. So mahalo no kako, everybody. Hey, uh, mahalo. Listen, we're going to, uh, he's going to do the uh, pule for us shortly, and we're going to do Hawaii Aloha. So if you want to come in or just join hands where you are, that's fine. Again, I just wanted to thank the Royal Order of Kamehameha, Kaikili Chapter 4, Maui Film and Research, the Kuei Petition, Paupena, uh, Koea 101 Financial, Fong Store, Four Sisters, and Poi by the Pound. And I'd like to thank our entertainers, and we'd like to thank all our speakers that spoke today. Thank you very much for that. Mahalo. So here, Pule now. Kuiluna. You know, I like to mahalo again because uh, I, me and my wife came at the last minute. We didn't expect to be up here. So I mahalo for the time. Uh, to be on the mic and to share our successes uh, from the past we never have so much successes to share so that's why we never showed up for events or never even had the, the will enough to talk about anything positive because we didn't have anything positive to talk about but now because what had happened to us to our family and to all of you that this opened the door it is a success, and I'm here to share. So, e mahalo no kako. E ho mali kako, e puli kako. E mahalo ke akua. Mahalo me kanani kamako makua, kalani ho kipa mai a makua pau. E ho olo olo me kamako mana o. Opo mai ka iana ne ke iala, a maola e me kamako nana o. With beating grace, we thank the Heavenly Father for keeping us in your kindness as well as keeping our thoughts in the divine care. We praise your name each day and the days ahead of you for your wisdom and your knowledge. We malue ke akue, malue na kupuna for allowing us to be in this place at this time to talk about the things that we need to prepare ourselves for, to give us strength every day so we stay the course and the course that we need to go. Imalano enakupuna, imalano ekeakua. Amama. Mahalo, everybody. So I just want to acknowledge Keokea Association. Mahalo, 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 because this would not happen if they didn't accept the invitation and offer I offered them. So hopefully next year we can redo this until, you know, maybe one day. We can actually have it on the 28th, and everybody can come, and nobody has to take off or anything. So that's what the goal is. That's just holomua. Mahalo nui. Thank you.